Well, hi everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study online. Tonight we're going to be looking at set apart in the way that we think from Romans chapter 12. The point of our study tonight is that living for Christ changes the way we think. Paul wrote his letter to the church at Rome during his second visit to Corinth. He used the first 11 chapters of the epistle to show his readers the wonderful plan of salvation that God had provided in the Lord Jesus. Beginning here in, verse, in chapter 12, he taught the practical, everyday principles of how a Christian should think and speak and act. So let's look at Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, sometimes he spoke to believers in generalities, and in other portions he spoke about issues relevant to Christians from a Jewish heritage or even from a Gentile heritage. Paul reminded the Roman Gentile believers that the grace of God had come to them through a new covenant. This new agreement between them and God had, had been caused by the failure of the Jews to fulfill all the responsibilities of the conditional agreement, which was called the Old Covenant. Jesus personally fulfilled the terms of the Old Covenant and initiated the New Covenant at the moment of his death, fulfilled through his resurrection. It was on this basis that Paul issued several challenges to the Roman believers. They were urged to present their own bodies as living sacrifices, holy, acceptable unto God. Paul considered this an act of true worship. Offering our bodies as living sacrifices is biblical, but it's also practical. In previous sessions, we learned how the Bible views the passions of our physical bodies as a source of frequent temptation to obey God. In fact, in Romans chapter 6, verse 11, we have been commanded to put off the deeds of the flesh. Here, God balances that point by giving a positive view of our bodies, telling us that they are capable of being offered as a sacrificial form of worship that God would accept. Because we are living in a, a new body and, and in a renewed mind results in personal trans transformation. This transformation is a spiritual condition so radical that the, bio, uh, that the Bible uses the biological term metamorphosis. That word means to change form. When we become a child of God, our entire perspective begins to undergo a complete transformation. This is what God intends. Now look at verse 3. For I say to you, through the grace of God given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one the measure of faith. For we are many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having challenged the Romans to devote themselves to a new level of transformed living, Paul quickly pivoted to warn believers to be circumspect in how they view themselves. He knew that possessing great knowledge and having unique spiritual experiences with God could lead to a person de developing spiritual pride. You see, pride attempts to rob God of His glory. That realization is behind Paul's warning. You see, in many cases, pride shows itself by us thinking too highly than we ought to think. I mean, social media has only just increased that problem as people create these wild, constructed views of themselves. But on the other hand, there are people who have an, uh, the opposite problem. They have a low esteem for themselves. Such people struggle with feelings of inadequacy. These views can cause depression because they are way out of spiritual balance. As Christians, we are members of the body of Christ. Each part knows its place 
and the work of God through the church becomes coordinated, executing God's will in our congregation, in our community, and in our world. Now look at verse 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, and honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, and given to hospitality. As Christians express their God-given roles in the body, love is made known. The expression of spiritual gifts within a congregation result in the building up of the church. But folks, it doesn't stop there. The same love that characterized believers' devotion to God and relationship to one another is seen in how we live in the world. The transformed believer becomes an agent of God's work and witness in Christian living, in Christian ministry, and in Christian ethics. Each of these has a love motivation. Indeed, we really love to see Christians set apart in the eyes of the world. Paul gives several imperatives, commands, that will help us focus on what it means to live a sacrificial life. First of all, it says we are to love without hypocrisy. Love and pretense can't exist together, folks, and love has little to do with sentiment. We are to detest evil and cling to that which is good. Love isn't real if it doesn't discriminate between evil and good. We're to love one another deeply as brothers and sisters, and we are to take the lead in honoring one another. Paul describes believers as a family, and he calls us to, to, to that kind of a significance and sacrificial love. We are not to lack diligence and zeal. Instead, we are to be fervent in the Lord, serving Him. We are to rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, and persistent in prayer. Our hope is a certain hope, one that's based on the person of the Lord Jesus Himself. A rejoicing people is more likely to be a loving people, and prayer will help in this regard. We're also to share with the saints their needs and to pursue hospitality. Of course, we are to share with people who are far from God too, but we are God's people, and they are our first priority. And one of the ways we do that is through hospitality. This is the way we are to live. Our love should be without hypocrisy, a love for good and a hatred for evil. Our attitudes and behaviors have got to be characterized by honor and diligence and patience and persistence and hospitality and generosity. But everything should be motivated by love. That's what sets us apart from the world. Amen? Well, that concludes our Wednesday night Bible study. But you know what? Sunday's coming. And we're looking for a grand day in the Lord. I trust we'll see you then. You know, folks, God is good all the time. We'll see you in church.